what I want to do is just first of all, and before I start off, sure. I want to explain to you that at this time, at the time frame that this is taking place, was while I was the general manager of the J.A. Ranch. And so, the, 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 some of the things that you're going to hear would only the guy in the management position would probably know about. Uh, but here, here, let's start off here with with the weekend uh, on uh, at the headquarters of the J.A. Ranch was pretty quiet because Monty had gone to Colorado and there were a lot of people, the ranch hands had kind of evacu uh, evaporated and gone to town or gone somewhere. So it was really quiet. So as I was always behind on my office work, I decided to go to the JA office and work for a couple of hours uh, while it was quiet and there was not a whole lot going on. And of course, the J.A. office is is, is there right across, right there on the grounds, by the, the between the the mess hall and the the big house. And I um, also it is the side of the Paladura post office, so it serves both as a post as a, the Paladura post office and the ranch office. So. Um, was not a whole lot else going on, so I was working in the office, and, and lo and behold, it doesn't take me but about two hours to get plenty of that bookkeeping. So I was sitting there thinking, ho oh, hum, I about had all of this I could stand when I heard a vehicle drive up. Well, hooray! I thought this gives gives me it kind of gives me an excuse to resign to to step down. So. I got up, walked over to the door, and, and opened the screen door, and I stepped out on the porch of the J.A. office and the Paladura post office, and there was an old gentleman in the car. And I spoke to him, and I said, get down, which is a common terminology around a wagon or something that you, you ask a man to get down. You don't, he, most of the time, you don't get down until you invite him to get down. So I just said, get down. Well, he said, a long time since I've been invited to get down. <laughs> I said, well, you're sure welcome here. So he got out and came up, and I could tell he'd been a, he'd been a man who, who knew his way around the cow outfit. And so I visited with him there for a little while, and he said he worked for the ranch back several years earlier. And I said, well, that's good. And, and we have, yeah, we visited there a little bit. I said, tell you what, would you like a cup of coffee? He said, I sure would. So we, I said, well, let's go over to Mess Hall and get a cup of coffee. So we walked across, it was right across the street and to the Mess Hall. And, and there was a big wraparound porch all the way around the, the Mess Hall and the bunkhouse. They were both all there together. And so. We got us a cup of coffee and walked, stepped out on the porch and we're sitting there in a, in a, uh, on the beach drinking a coffee, sipping a coffee, and he said he began to kind of loosen up and talk a little bit, you know. Most of these guys are a little bit shy. He said, you know, said, I was sitting here one time, said when I first went to work, they put me with a, with a fellow by the name of Ike Rude. And I said, he said, uh, it was a real adventure just following Ike around. But he said, we were sitting here talking and, and drinking our coffee and said, all at once said, Ike jumped up and he said, you see that big bull down there in the Lone Tree Pasture? The pasture right in front of the headquarters. And there was an old buffalo bull that had been got run off from the herd. The young ones were running the old bulls off. He was just kind of wandering around by himself. See, said, I, I could tell I had a fever. He said, let's go rope that sucker. I said, I ain't neither one of them horses we we're riding had, got, had any rope experience. What do you, what do you mean roping a, a bull, a buffalo bull? He said, he got to, I said, they got to learn sometime. I said, he said, I never will forget that. What I said, they got to learn sometime. <clears throat> I thought, well, I'll just said he was cinching up, getting ready to go, and said, by the time I got cinched up and got mounted, he'd already built a loop and was heading for the bull. He said, we got down there in Lone Tree. Well, the old bull looked around and said, hey, those <laughs> pests are about to, uh, coming at me pretty fast. Said, I believe I'll trot on out. 
So he started moving on out, and I was a whipping that old colt. He was a whipping him on the, at the business end of that road, bathing him on the rear end to get up next to that, close enough to that bull buffalo to rope him. And lo and behold, I throwed a loop, and it took. <laughs> I'll sw he, he said, I'll swear to goodness, when that, when that bull hit the end of that rope, he said, I believe Ike and that coat and that bronc both were airborne for a short distance, and then when they hit, they hit with a thud. And he said they plowed up a little bit of J.A. turf. <laughs> he said, about that time the rope broke. Oh. He said, probably all that saved his life was the rope broke. <clears throat> he said, Ike jumped up, went to whipping that old coat and said, get up, get up from there, you honorary outfit. And he said, uh, looked down at me, he said, give me your rope. He said, I said, Ike, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to go get my rope back. I thought, oh Lord, I don't know if I can take another one of these trips or not. So he said, so I got on that old coat and bathed him a little bit with that rope and took him in there for that bull. And I said, I believe I've had enough. So I believe I want to go back to the headquarters. So he, I went back to headquarters and the last I saw Ike, he was going over the hill chasing that bull. He said, uh, I went on back to the, uh, to the bunkhouse and was laying around the, over the weekend taking it easy. And about the middle of the afternoon, I come wandering in. I raised up and I said, Ike, how'd it go? Lost another rope. I said, really? <laughs> he said, yeah. He said, uh, that bull is a little bit tough. I said, I'd say so, yes. <laughs> anyway, the moral of this story is there's not a thing in the world that Ike Rude was, was scared to rope. He would rope a freight train if it got, uh, happened to fit. And let me tell you the rest of the story about Ike Rude. If you didn't know, he was, he's been inducted into four rodeo halls of fame. He's been uh, in the profession of cowboys in Colorado City, uh, Colorado Springs, the cowboy, the rodeo uh, the, uh, of the Hall of Fame in Oklahoma City, and uh, also in the Hall of Fame in Tushai and Wyoming, and, all, and also at the Mangum, Oklahoma Hall of Fame. I don't know of any other athlete in any sport that's been in four Halls of Fame. All I can say about Ike and Ike Rude is he just one hell of a hand. And that's what I'm going to leave it there, out there because uh, uh, he was a hell of a hand. Well, he turned to me and he said, uh, that's just the end of my story about me and Ike Rude. And I said, well, I'd say you had a had a pretty good education just getting to ride with Ike Rude. And he said, I did. I said, well, let me tell you, uh, I, I've always have appreciated what I've heard about Ike Rude, that he was, he was, a, was a tough contestant in the arena or anywhere you put him. So this old guy left and I, man, I thought a lot about the story and, and about uh, six months later my wife's cousin was inducted in the Cowboy Hall of Fame in Oklahoma City. So we went to his induction and her induction to me and, and uh, we, well, I, uh, well, they, uh, when, uh, before the induction they announced the, the, the recipients of the, of the Hall of Fame and they called, I said, Ike Root from Mangum, Oklahoma and his wife and, and son are both here. Would you stand up? Well, I spotted him across the arena and I mean across the big hall there and I uh, saw his wife and, and son. And I kind of got them spotted. So after it was all over with, I worked my way across there and, and got in, and, and introduced myself to Ms. Ike Rude. And I said, uh, I got to tell you a story. I told her this story about what this old puncher had told, told me. He said, she said, it sounds just like Ike. Said Ike, was, there was not anything that Ike was afraid to, wasn't for, uh, wanting to rope. And said he would, was pretty tough any way you wanted to slice it, uh, steer tripping, tie down roping, or whatever it was, he was pretty tough. 
I said, yeah, undoubtedly he must have been. So I guess all we can say about Ike Rudd, he was just one hell of a hand. <laughs>